Y'all hear me? God bless, God bless. Amen, amen. We have a little difficult challenging getting in, but that's okay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 We're about to start in a few more minutes. Like I said, we just ran into a little difficult challenging getting in we bless your name jesus uh we put the technology under the blood of jesus every air principality the blood of jesus the blood of jesus thank you lord Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Yes, God. That, that light is kind of warm. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, we bless your name. As we get started, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just thank you, God, Heavenly Father. We gathering together tonight, oh God, to come into agreement of the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus, hallelujah. We're two or more gathered. The Father, you are already in the midst, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We ask you, oh God, allow your glory to rest on us tonight, oh God. I pray, Father, as we begin to get into this word, as we dive in, Father, that you give us more understanding, oh God, more wisdom, oh God, in the mighty name of oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God. We bind up every distraction, oh God. Hallelujah. We come against it and we put it under the blood of Jesus, every confusion. Father, there is no distance in the spirit and we thank you for the people that are, are coming in, oh God, and have the desire to pray and to speak up on tonight and take authority over all of the evil spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, give us them. The, the boldness to speak up and take authority over the demons in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Your word is declared that you have given them power over all evil spirits in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We thank you. We pray in agreement with each and every one of them tonight, uh, everyone on the on the class tonight, oh God, that, that we begin to rise up, oh God, and be all that you call us to be, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. You are the delivering power, oh God, to bring freedom and wholeness, oh God, into your people's life, oh God. Give the people we uh, give the people all the tools and the instruments that they need, oh God, the keys that you have already granted us, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Give us a strategy and tactics against the enemy, oh God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
Jesus, and we praying for wisdom in every situation, oh God, to know how best to minister to your people, oh God, in every situation and that's entangled with demonic spirits, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And we pray and we declare, oh God, that everything must line up with the word and the will of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray these things in your macro name, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Well, good evening, everybody. Well, I just want to say welcome back. Welcome back. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I I tell you guys, it, it was a little bit, it was a little bit like pulling pulling teeth uh trying to get in today. Uh get, I was freezing and I oh, couldn't hear my, uh, nothing. I was like, okay. Uh, it, it's my favorite word. Ain't nobody mad but the dirt. Yes, yes. So we don't give the enemy too much credit. You know, he uh, we already know he cannot do anything without our father's permission. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I just wanted to make sure um, that the, okay, that it is being posted. I'm just going to go ahead and share real quick with my friends and family. Uh, the class, let them know that we now are on. Amen. 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 So um, we're going to talk tonight. Um, well, the, the first, of course, the video that we had uh, to for homework was you got authority and uh, authority assignment, I think it was as well that Vance had uh that uh not dance but that had also elaborated on and if you guys got a chance to watch the video it's a blessing it was a blessing so uh, if anybody uh got a chance to watch it go ahead and unmute and uh talk to me ladies who uh watched the video i'll go since it's quiet <laughs> Can you hear me okay, Apostle? Yes, ma'am. Wait a minute. Well, let's see, Liz. Did anybody else? I want to make sure that everybody else are able to go. Uh, I mean, was able to watch the video. Alicia N and Alicia M. Come on, Alicia. Apostle, I apologize. I did not get a chance to watch the video, but I will watch it this evening to get the Amen. And it's short. It's a short video, so that's a blessing. Amen. All right. What about you, Alicia? M. Mabin, did you get a chance to? I did. I, I did. <clears throat> I did. Amen. Amen. Okay. Talk to me. What? What you? What you? Uh, take any notes? Did you get anything? I, I did learn take some anything? notes, and I did take some notes, and um, what he said was, uh, "Born again believers, we have the power. We have uh, the authority." Um, uh, we have the power. God gives us their power, and we've been kind of taught wrong about some things. Like they always say, we we are the the sheep, you know, and the wolves attack us. But when you're under the obedience of Christ, you know we we are really the lions that can take authority. Um, and it was a lot of things he said. It was a short video, but what I gathered. Most of all is that we, when we get attacked, we're not getting attacked. We're getting attacked against because we believe in different uh, by the society, by the government, by the churches, by religious leaders, and even by our families, you know. And when we begin to walk in the obedience of Christ, and it said, uh, and one thing that really grabbed me is that he was talking about the demons and he was saying demons are territorial. And so I look around, I look here, even in St. Louis, all the shootings and all the violence that goes on. And, and so if we are born again believers have the authority, are we supposed to have the authority? Then it seems like the churches or we as, as the people are not taking the authority that God has given us to cast out these demons and all this corruption that's going on <clears throat> uh, in our communities and even in our families. And, um, and it says, as long as we walk in the obedience, we have the authority. 
And what else did it say? He said a lot of powerful things. And it's like, I, maybe I didn't write this down, but I said, we are like sheep among the wolves, but we are destined to walk in the authority that God has given us and that the demons tremble. You know, the demons are supposed to flee. Uh, you know, I, 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 did, I, I watched it once. I'd like to watch it again because he said a lot of powerful things. <laughs> Excuse me. He said a lot of powerful things. Um, and that uh, the spiritual world, uh, that the spiritual world recognizes, they only recognize one name with their power, and that's the name of Jesus. They recognize that, and they have to flee. When we call on the name of Jesus, they have to flee. And then he was saying a lot of times when he said people say, you know, I cast out that demon. I couldn't sleep. I was this. I was that, you know. And he said, we put the blessed oil on in holy water. I think that's how he said it, you know. And he said, it's not supposed to be that way. When you've done the work that God has called you to do, we're supposed to sleep like babies. Because there's nothing that can attack us when we're under the obedience of Christ. So that's kind of like some of what I got out of it. Like I said, it was a short video, but it was a very powerful video. Uh, so that's what I got. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. All right, Liz. Well, Liz, let me hear what you got. I'm going to go ahead and mute you, uh, Alicia. M, just for a quick minute so I can hear Liz. Come on, sweetie. Okay, I'm ready. This was an awesome video full of information and Luke 10 and 1, Luke 10 and 1, how the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them out two by two into every city versus the 12 in Luke 10, Luke 10, and that demons are subjects to us in your name. Satan fell like lightning from heaven in your name and are written in heaven, God is a happy God, and that Jesus rejoiced in the spirit, authority through assignment. Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, Jesus sends out the 12 disciples, and how they struggled with deliverance. They still couldn't cast out a demon in the boy. 70 disciples, we don't know their name. Jesus called them babe, lamb among wolves, 12 sheep, and wait, sheep among wolves, Lamb is a younger version of a sheep. Luke 10, Luke 10, lambs, they were the little ones. Go and preach the gospel, heal the sick. Jesus uh, gives authority over demons. Jesus, okay. Empower them. And then and he sends them out among the wolves. They might, they might attack you. Religious people, the government, society might come against you. They didn't go. They did not. They did not exercise spiritual authority. They went. They went to do their assignment, and they didn't look for demons. The, they looked for the lost, but authority was released. Focus on your assignment. Focus on your assignment, and okay, there it is. And to focus on your assignment to Christ. When you walk in your assignment, you will walk in authority. You will walk with. You will walk with authority. Commit to the assignment in Jesus' name. You will walk in the authority. Jesus says that. That your fear, your fear, I can't remember. Honey. Increase your authority is written. Your name is written in the into the body of book of life. That where your authority is connected to, and that your authority comes from obedience to Jesus. And that Lord, I'm going to go where you have called me to do. Devotion to God. Seek commitment to God, and you will seek commitment to God. Purpose, and that your authority comes from your assignment. An assignment to be needing grounds for my ministry authority connects to your assignment and that you have stepped out on god's assignment of your life and that you will focus much on walking in dominion and victory and god continue to be focused on what god has called you to do because god's purpose of your life is always an umbrella of god's protection and god's supply and that when christian fulfills their duty automatically have the authority and when a non-christian wants to walk in spiritual authority they are impersonating it's like a felony in the spiritual realm and that your authority is connected to obedience and that how the sons of Sceva were impersonating spiritual authority in a backfire. And that 
you have to walk in obedience to God. Otherwise, you're in spiritual um, impersonation and that just need to be obedient and that authority connected to obedience and that the spiritual world responds to the authority and the authority that Jesus has. The spiritual realm responds to the authority, walk in authority, and you've got to belong to the authority of Jesus. And you've got to have Jesus as your chief of police. Jesus clothes you with righteousness. He gives you a badge of authority. It's given to help people who walk in obedience. And authority belongs to sheep, and authority belongs to lamb. And that belong to the spiritual fathers, young and old, and spiritual babes as well. And that you are a lamb among wolves, and that you are a lion, and the devil is a snake. And who is the wolf? The government, society, your family, lots of people, religious institutions, and how I will walk in obedience, and I am a lamb among wolves, and that we walk in innocence and wisdom, and that there will always be an attack on your life the moment you come into your in life to obedience to Christ, and that one of them will attack. We shouldn't be discouraged, and by walking in authority, our Savior will continue being bitten by wolves. Jesus was a lamb, and that priests, government officials never stop being a lion. Don't stop being in. Don't clam up on the persecution. And that Jesus doesn't promise us um, retaliation when, I think I read that right now, we do spiritual warfare doesn't mean that Jesus says when you walk in authority, by no means, somebody's nothing will no means will hurt you in the realm of the flesh. We are lambs and that sometimes can be taken advantage of and that's okay in the realm of the spirit. Same lambs become lions. Don't forget that you have a dual identity as a lamb and other as a lion. Don't stop attacking just because you're being attacked. And I walk in authority at the moment I fast and pray and that the devil will come against us and that I will, and that hell will break loose. Jesus tells us physical fusion is not physical retaliation. I think I wrote that down, right? Spiritual warfare, cover yourself with a lot of the blood, cover yourself with the water and that because devil are coming back to attack you and that we have to break the traditional thinking and that we will walk in authority of Christ that devil has already been defeated and that he is under our feet and authority in Jesus and that had the shield of faith and you had the armor and nothing shall hurt authority. Do you come under attack from Christian wolves should be like religious institutions, government, society, and that spirituality is under a check, check your armor and that rehearse the verse until it becomes an identity and true in your life and exercising authority diminishes state and influence and that demons have excessive or territorial you exercise your authority in everything you walk in authority and that Satan falls again not only in life but in your territory demonstrate and demons are very territorial they like their territories that's why like the legion said to jesus we're that's that we're okay if we leave the man but don't let us leave the country and that the prince of Persia came to daniel and he tried to resist daniel and the angel that came to daniel said i fought against the Persian prince of Persia, and he wasn't fighting a man who was simple and angel could slay a thousand in the spirit. And how the archangel was fighting a spiritual principality, and that Paul says a spiritual, says that we are fighting fight against principalities and power, and that when you waste, well, don't waste your time, oh, come on, okay, not maybe Christian authority, Satan's influence in the realm of the spirit, and your family pray for territories in your city, country begins, and that because are eliminated because when you walk in authority, and that it brings Jesus joy when you walk in authority, and that Jesus was exuberantly joyful. First Timothy 1 and 11, First Timothy 1 and 11, and that God rejoices in his works, Psalms 104, 31, Psalms 104 and 31, and that how God does rejoice when a person gets saved, and that how God rejoices over Jerusalem in the book of Luke and that when Jesus sees babes battle, it brings him joy. When he sees lambs walk in authority and that when the 70 walk in their assignment, they begin to command and decree speaking to the sickness and that you have a spiritual authority. And that's why some people do not understand. And that some, the, some people don't understand the prayers that we pray, the authority of faith, speak to the mountain, authority declares and decrees, an authority doesn't beg or plead. You don't ask or plead with the mountain. You make the devils mad when you use your authority. An authority changes your voice. It changes your attitude and it changes your approach. 
you become a lion and the devil becomes a snake. And that God rejoices when you walk in your authority, rise up in your authority, and you want to put a smile on Jesus' face. Stop walking around like a silent, sweet Christian. I don't know how he said that. A snowflake, no snowflake Christian. And how you are in Christ, stop giving the devil too much credit and that he has already gotten defeated. Live that authority in everyday life and that that you have ne- you are never off duty. It gives Jesus joy when you cast out devils and that demon looks at us in fear and that commanding to mountain. And that's all I got. Amen. And that was good. I mean, it brings something up, and I'm telling you, I mean, you guys got to know what y'all just um, heard and what we're learning. We got to start applying it and 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 begin to activate it through our faith. Okay, what you know, what we learning, we got to begin to activate it with faith. You know. Because you're going to get tested. I guarantee you what you're learning, you're going to get tested within that, in this time frame. I'm just letting you know, getting guys aware of that. Uh, and, and I hear so many praise reports and testimonies on, you know, how a lot of times everything that we're learning is definitely going to be an application. You're going to always know how to apply what you're learning. Amen. Because there's no one thing I could say, God ain't giving you all these tools in y'all tool belts and allowing them to, to, to rust away. No, he wants you to be able to utilize what's in your bag, what's in your uh, hands. Amen. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready. Y'all know this is time that I always call what times cardboard boxes and crayons out and get a chance to write down the notes that we're going to give you on tonight. Amen. I, I did say cray, uh, <laughs> crayons because I know schools for the start and you know we got those crayons and magic markers and all that you know and pencils and things so I just was saying that yeah get grab something sometimes when you're ready to take notes and everything or even write something down you can't find a pen in the house so hey bitch so I'm praying that you guys get what you need amen to go ahead and take notes and i thank god for uh liz you're doing uh, an awesome job and you're going to be do be my note taker on this evening and the zoom and alicia nape uh newbie god bless you she's on facebook uh also monitoring and doing uh notes on that as well uh on facebook god bless you both amen all right okay so the scripture of course you already know luke 10 and 19 we should be able to rehearsal that uh, know that by memory okay rehearsal that by meaning that we should be able to see, say that in our sleep amen what is it behold i give you get them give unto you what the power to what tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you amen see when that when that right there began to uh penetrate in in your spirit or begin or you begin to marinate on just that within itself as believers this is what we are supposed to be walking in amen amen all right so let you know the uh history behind this particular passage it was actually, uh, it talked about the 72 of Jesus' disciples had returned from separating the message that the kingdom of God is near. To validate their message, Jesus gave them power to what? Heal diseases and injuries. But they are especially amazed that the demons submit to the word under Jesus' name. See, Jesus explained that those victories or signs that God has already defeat, defeated Satan, amen? And know also in Luke 10 and 9, Luke 10, verse 9, it says, heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom God of God has come to you. And, and turn to Luke 10, verse 17 through 18, Luke 10, verse 17 through 18. And that's where we were just talking about the, the 72 uh, return with joy and said, 
Lord, even the demons are submitted to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. See, throughout Jesus' ministry, the Jews thought that he had come to return the, poli the political independency by driving out the Romans. But after John the Baptist was born, his father, who was a priest, prophesied that the Jews would be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all who hated us. And that was in Luke uh, 1, verse 71. Luke 1, verse 71. It says salvation from us, from our enemies and from the hand of all. Uh, see, Jesus revealed that the enemies are not the Romans, but the serpents and the scorpions of the power of the enemy, uh, Satan as a snake being like, be, being linked to begin in Genesis 3 verse 14 through 15 Genesis 3 verse 14 through 15 and um, as you know that Jesus was speaking to these uh, selected followers and God also rescued uh, in stimulus uh, fool and has also begun um, amen begun uh, y'all, I'm up here multitasking. I'm, I'm going to have to change this, letting y'all come in automatically because this is distracting me when I have to bring y'all in. I apologize. All right. So where was we at? So, oh, so praise God. So we talked, we're talking about um, the, the, the scripture on, on um, when Jesus was, when they was, when the uh, 72 was uh, rejoicing because they had, was casting demons out and in Jesus name and they came back with a report. So just to say also that even this um, in Mark 16, 18, Mark 16, I know where I'm going, Mark 16 and 18, it says Jesus says something similar when given the great commission after the resurrection. He said they well, what pick up serpents with their hands, uh huh, and they will drink uh, uh, and deadly any deadly poison, and it will not harm them. And they will lay what their hands on the sick, okay, and they will recover, amen. Mark 16, verse 9 through 20. R read that on your leisure time, write that down. Mark 16, verse 9 through 20, okay, so. The key thing that you heard uh, Pastor Vance said, he said, your authority grows as your obedience does. I write that down. Your authority grows as your obedience does. Okay. So if you walk, if you want to uh, walk in, in authority, you have to walk in like Jesus. Come on. It's simple, guys. If you pretend to have authority through your own power, you will not have the authority that makes the demons flee or the mountains move. So we all have strong shortcomings, but in Christ, authority doesn't only apply to the shepherds, but also, at, also to the sheep. See, we walk as sheep in society full of wolves, okay? And so when we see Luke 10 and three, Luke chapter 10, verse three, it said, go. I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Now, we, we heard the difference between lambs and sheep. Lambs is, is still a babe, right? And sheep are a little bit uh, adult. They're the uh, adult, okay? And, and, and you know, sheep are very humble, okay? We already know sheep are very, yeah, very humble. They, you know, they're not like goats. Goats are a little stubborn. So it's a difference between goats and sheep, okay? So just wanted to throw that out. So know that the wolves, listen to this, the wolf signifies, come on, persecution. Wolves signifies persecution, not retaliation from the devil, but if it's not the devil but the world that we we uh, that will attack a person who walks in the authority of Jesus Christ. Come on. And we, you remember what he was saying when a lot of times you get an attack is normally through uh, religion. Um, well, I used to call it the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Your family, come on. Uh, politics, governments, those are the things that normally uh, 
hits you the hardest. And that's what it just said. So there will always what be a guaranteed from society. And those were what we said, your family, government, religious institutions. When you commit your life to Christ, amen. When you commit your life to Christ, amen. So we should not be discouraged by this because our Savior was constantly being bit bit by the wolves when he was a lamb of God here on earth. See, what is authority? And I'm glad you asked, what is authority? See, authority uh, that Jesus is talking about in Luke 10, verse 19, that we talked about early, it is not a brutal force power. It delegates power, much like a, a, a police um, possessions. Uh, when a policeman steps out in front of the traffic, he holds up his hand to stop it, and he's not uh, stopping cars and trucks with his own brutal strength. Come on, he's on. He stops them with the delegation of authority that comes from wearing the uniform. Come on, he's backed up. He's backed. He's backed by. He's backing it up by the law. He's back. His back by the law. Okay. He's what I mean. He's backing up. He's backed up. The law backs him up. Okay. Let me let me make that a little bit a little bit more clear to you. Just like when we walk in authority with Christ Jesus, come on, heaven is backing us up. Come on, God is backing us up. Amen. See, the, 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 uh, that, that's the authority that you have in Christ. And you're not stopping the force of darkness and, and sickness, fear, and evil lack with your own strength. Don't get it twisted. So you're, you, you're stopping them with the delegate, uh, delegated uh, authority that is given to you by God. Come on, by God, Christ Jesus, come on. See, you are you, you you backed up, you backed by all the power of God, amen? And see, how amazing is that? See, God Almighty uh, 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 is almighty himself. He is the power behind your authority, praise God. And Ephesians 6 and 10 talks about that. Ephesians 6 verse 10 says, be strong in the Lord and the power of of his might, my God. See, that means that you can step out in front of the devil and hold your hand up and say, no, not today, Satan. See, back up, come on, because you got what? You got the power of God almighty backing you up, amen? And see, that's why we had to what? Look, the devil needs to be fleeing from you, not, not you running from the, the demon, come on. Because uh, if you know what you walk in, the authority that you walk in, like I said, you will know what you do. You put your hand up and tell them, uh-uh, I, I would bind you up in the mighty name of Jesus. Call that thing out. I, I bind the spirit of fear and I cast you into the pits of wherever Jesus may send you. And I loose right now. God said the word. What's the word? God doesn't give us the spirit of, of, of spirit. Uh, God doesn't give us the fear. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm, let me slow down. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Come on. Any sound mind Christians out there? Any sound? Let me correct that. Is this any sound? Come on. People in hell. Health minds out there, healthy believers. Come on. Hey, man. So it belongs to us. Come on. Get what belongs to you. Get all that God has for you. Remember, it belongs to us automatically. Once you ask God into your life, right? Once you ask the Lord to be the savior of your life and take control of your life and be the, come on. It, automatic comes with the territory now it belongs to you see the bible says that you are the body of christ first corinthians 12 verse 27 talk about that first corinthians 12 verse 27 see jesus is the head and we are the body hallelujah and his authority is uh penetrates uh uh, uh, perpetrates, I'm sorry, through the body, perpetrates through the body. So when Jesus rose from the dead, uh huh, he transferred his authority on earth to his body, the church, hallelujah. And in God's mind, when Christ was risen, we were risen with him, hallelujah. Ephesians 2 verse 20, um, Ephesians 2 verse 6, Ephesians 2 verse 6, it says, 
rise up from the dead alone with Christ and seat us with him in the heavenly realm because we are united with Christ Jesus. Oh, guys, know this for sure that we are seated in heavenly places. Come on, guys. We are seated in heavenly places. Places. my God. See, both the head and the body are seated there. So next to God in the palace of, of, of I mean, the place of the power and authority, that means that you are seated there. Praise God. So you are seated in the power position and you are in his herod. Amen. You are a part of the kingdom. Amen. You are the royal queens and daughters and sons. Amen. Romans 8 and 17. Romans 8 and 17. Write that down. We're going we uh know that it, that is that means that everything that he that is his, including his authority, now belongs to you and I. Amen. Amen. Next, how to use it? How to use what God is already given us. Mm. See, the door of exercising your authority in Christ is like the hinges of, of Ephesians 1, uh, verse 20, Ephesians 1, verse 20, and also Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, Ephesians 2, uh, uh, verse 6. See, that verse that says that we are seated with God in Christ, that I am, I encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, you to meditate on those until you fully grasp the revelation that you are seated with him and you're the one that he moves through. Amen. So then when we, when the adversary arise, use your authority by speaking out what his word says using the name of Jesus. Come on, there's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Come on, and in, in the word said it in, in the name of Jesus, he said every knee a bow and every tongue will confess that he is God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So know this guys, for example, you could say sickness, I command you to leave my body in Jesus name. That's according to the, the scripture say, is written. It says uh, 1 Peter 2 verse 24, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. So by his strikes, I am healed. Although I might not feel it in my body, come on, aches and pains and, and different symp symp symptoms might be there, but I'm going to speak what thus says the Lord, what the word of God said. I'm going to keep on taking this medicine and I'm going to say, Lord, by your strikes, Lord, eventually I'm going to stop. You're going to heal me from this and I will no longer have to take this medication in Jesus name. Come on. See, see, that's the authority. Hallelujah. is in the name of Jesus. Praise God. See, I, I like using the name uh, uh, of a president of a company. See, that, 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 that name can get things done. And it's the same in the spirit, ma'am. See, except the, the name of Jesus is higher. Come on, accept that, accept that. Come on, that the name of Jesus is higher and it carries more weight than any other name. Philippians 2, verse 9. Philippians 2, verse 9. Write that down, Philippians 2, verse 9. So next, as I'm almost trying to get through this. See, Jesus, number one, Jesus secured our, our power and our authority. Come on. That's just like money in the bank. That's just like, come on. That's like, but um, I said, yeah, money in the bank. Yes. Knowing that is secure. That's a secure loan. Come on. See, Jesus secured our power, like I said, and authority. See, Jesus succeeded in, in securing all powers by, by going to the cross. Hey, Amen. Dying a horrible death and suffering the penalty for our sin and defeating Satan in the pit of hell. See, the, he came to earth as a man for one reason, and that's what to recap the uh, authority that Satan has stolen through Adam's disobedience in the garden. See, Jesus was called the last Adam. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. And know that after that, uh, after securing the power and the authority, he freely gave it over and will believe on him, you 
and me. Amen. It is not enough for us to simply accept Jesus' uh, work at, at, at Calvary, but we are held or responsible for much more. See, Jesus' words in the uh, 16th chapter of, of Mark was not intended for the early church alone. His words are just as valid uh, and real today as when they were first spoken, praise God. See, Jesus appeared to his disciples after, after his resurrection from the dead and And his words to them from the basis, it was, it was, amen. Hi, friend. <laughs> so, listen, where I am, y'all. See, that's why I, I can't tap the, the button and I get get thrown off. All right, so let me go back. So, but the, so it was it it was at the time that he delegated the authority what to carry out that work. See, beginning in in verse fifteen uh, uh, of that uh, passage we're talking about in Mark sixteen and verse fifteen, Jesus said it. Mark sixteen verse fifteen through sixteen, and I'm gonna read this real quick. These these, these um, four passage. Mark sixteen verse fifteen said, "Go ye until all the world." and preach the gospel to every creature. And, and he that believeth, hallelujah, or, or if there's some believers in this room tonight, is there, the, is there some believers, come on, on YouTube, is there believers there on Facebook? Can I get a witness if you a believer or not? Come on, yes, yes. I, 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 and, and he said, and is baptized shall be saved. Come on, see, but, but he that believeth not shall be dim. See, and then Mark 16, verse 17 through 18, Mark 16 through 17 through 18 says, these miraculous signs shall follow that believe. See, in my name, they shall shall they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues and they shall take up the serpents and and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in jesus name amen so we have the authority ladies and gentlemen to preach the gospel again write this down we have the authority to what to preach the gospel see because he said go ye into what all the world and preach the gospel to what every come on living creature come on and every born again believer th that has the authority and responsibility to preach the gospel of jesus christ in this earth if you can't go, then you can send someone in your place. I don't know if I want to send somebody in my place. I just have to kind of elaborate that because that that makes make me feel like I'm a little chicken, feel like I'm I, I'm I'm afraid. You know what I'm saying? Now I I need God to give me that Holy Ghost boldness. Come on, not not allow me to be fearful when I meet when I uh, minister to man or woman. God just use me, allow you to be that uh, voice, be that mouthpiece for me. Amen. See, and these signs, they say, shall follow them that believe. My God, this is just going right into a night, a night of miracle. Come on, because that's what we're looking for. If we are believers, that's why the signs shall automatic. Come on, signs and wonders and miracles shall follow us. See, I, I want you to notice who is to do all these things and and then them and that believe. See, these signs will follow the believers who act in faith and boldly speak in Jesus' name. See, they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues and they shall what, lay hands on the sick. See, the believers is the one with the power and authority to do these things. My God, come on, help us, God. See, and then verse 20 uh, of that uh, says that they went forth and they preached everywhere. Who sound like they was excited. It sound like they had some fire underneath their feet. Come on. They had that zeal and the love for Christ and, and want everybody to know what God is doing and what he, ah, oh, my God have done for them. See, the Lord works with them and, and confirming the word with signs following. Confirm his word, but the first 
for you and I come in. See, God does not d- does not preach. He He gives us the authority to do the preaching. Praise God. So God will not lay hands on the sick. He will bring the healing. Hallelujah. But you and I as believers must lay hands on the sick by faith. See, believing that God will perform his work. Did I freeze? Yeah, I froze. Okay, his word. Amen. Next, we have authority to stand against Satan. We have the authority to stand against Satan. See, and then, I'm, let me go, and then write this down. We are seated with him in high authority. We are seated with him in high authority. Next, we have the, the power of God's word to exercise our authority. Amen. We have the power of God to God's word to exercise our authority. Next, we have the authority to act as new creations. We have the authority to act as new creation. Amen. Uh, We can minister and walk from a point of authority. I'm going to repeat. We can minister and walk from a point of authority. Amen. So let me, let me see. I got eight minutes if I can wrap this up. Okay. All right. Thanks, God. All right. So we will go back to no, the number three was we have the authority to stand against Satan. See, one of the most vital of vital uh, areas uh, of the believer's authority is his power to to successfully to stand against Satan. Ephesians 4, verse 27. Ephesians 4, verse 27 says, neither give place to the devil. And 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 we already know in the sixth chapter of Ephesians, he talked about that the apostle Paul described the armor that we are uh, as believers or to wear in combat against Satan. See, he explained each piece of that armor it is the armor of god but not once does he said that god would put the armor on you and that god will fight the devil for you see he said you is understood in the subject of this verse that he says that you will be strong in the lord and you will put on the the whole armor of christ of god and 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 you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and you will take the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the in the evil days and have having done all see you stand See, God has given you the power and the authority to stand against Satan and his destructive works. He has provided, God has provided the armor, but it is our responsibility as believers to put on that armor and stand against the devil. James 4 and 7 says, James 4 verse uh, 7 says that you resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, the armor and the weapons or see god is there with you to back his word and but all is worthless unless you take the position of authority and assume your responsibility to use what he has already provided us with so you have the power and the authority to take the word of god the name of jesus and the power of the holy spirit and run satan out of your affairs come on ladies and gentlemen don't 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 pray and ask god to fight satan for you but you are the one in authority Praise God. So take your responsibility and speak directly to Satan yourself and stand your ground firmly and he will flee. Any questions? Make sure y'all write it in the chat for me and I will try to answer as soon as possible. I'm done. I'm almost done. And then I was saying number four, that we are seated where with him in high high authority that means in the first chapter what in, in Ephesians that Paul prayed and prayed for uh, uh, the body of believers in Ephesians and and then one part of that prayer was that that they know that exceeding greatness of his power to those who believe in Ephesians 1 verse 19 Ephesians 1 verse 19 so that means that he exceeded great power is the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead and to set him at his own right hand in the heavenliness. Amen. So Ephesians 1 and 21, Ephesians 1 verse 21, it tells us that Jesus is seated for uh, above all principalities and, and power and might and dominion and, and every name that is named. See, the work God did in Jesus was superior, supreme. See, his he he raised Jesus from the dead and set him uh far above all 
other authority, not only in this world, but also in the heavenly world. Praise God. And verse 22 then says that God has put all those things under his feet and made him head over the church, which is in his body. So where are the feet? Where are the feet? See, they are in the body. They are part of the body. Come on. As believers, we are put, we are a part of his body and we are to seat it with him in the heavenly exalted, exalted uh, place of authority. Praise God. So look at, remember to look at Ephesians chapter two of Ephesians and, and, and you had, and it said, and you had him quickened and he was dead, transpassed uh, sin. So even when we were dead in sin, God had quickened us together with Christ God, and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Christ Jesus, come on. And Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 6. Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 6. So we are what? Again, we are seated together with him. Where? For above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. See, as a believer, you have accepted the the substance the the, uh, the sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary. See, therefore, that you are a part of His body and seated with Him. Praise God in that heavenly place. See, equipped it with the same power. Come on, the same authority that He has. Praise God. See, the great power that God worked in Christ when He risen from the dead is the same created power of God that worketh in you to make you alive when you were dead in the trespassing as sins. See, the moment that you were made uh, Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Lord of your life, the same power was exercised on, on your death. And that means un, unregenerated or uh, spirit or caused to it to be uh, reborn in his likeness of God himself. See, any man that who is in Christ Jesus is a new creation, new creation, and old things has passed away, and all things are the new, and all and all things are of God. Second Corinthians five verse seventeen. Second Corinthians five verse seventeen. So as believers, we are part of his body and we are seated with him in that heavenly exalted place of authority. Praise God. See, number five was we have the power of God's word to exercise our authority. It says, and the same day when even was, even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over into the other side. And when they had uh, this, well, I'm reading out of Mark. I'm sorry, God. Mark. 4 verse 35 through 40 mark 4 verse 35 through 40 and then he said and when they had sent away the multitude they had took him up even even as he was in the ship and there was also with him uh other little ships and there was arose a great storm of the wind and the waves beat it into the in, into the ship and so that was now full and as and he was in the hit hit hider hinder place, hiding place, a hinder place of the, the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awoke in him and said unto him, Master, carish thy not that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Amen. See, and he said unto them, why are you fearful? How is that? You have no faith. See, Jesus spoke the words, come on, let us pass over unto the other side. And there was enough power and authority in those words to accomplish the job. See, one thing I want you to notice that Jesus did not take command of the ship to see that his word were carried out. He walked to the back of the boat and went to sleep because Jesus delegated the authority to his disciples and they accepted it. So, but when the storm came, they were filled with uh, a fear that the boat would sink and Jesus had to carry out the responsibility of the authority that he had delegated to them by rebuking the wind and the sea of and see so you have the power and the authority to take the word of God the name of Jesus the power of the Holy Spirit and run Satan out of your affairs come on y'all see see I want you to to see this parable uh um per um parable 
I, I want you to understand this, okay? See, the God is the captain of your ship. And he controls uh, over your own life. He, ha he, he has control of your own life, your spirit, your soul, and your body. See, see, Jesus had delegated the power and authority over Satan to you, uh, uh, over Satan for you as a believer that you are to give Satan no place in your life. See, you are a born of the spirit of God and you are filled with the spirit of God. You have been given the word of God and these three elements or enough for you to carry out your spiritual authority here on earth. Come on, see, you don't need any more power. You just have all, you you have all the power that's necessary. See, you you simply have the ex exercise your authority. Jesus has already done everything necessary to secure the authority and the power over the sin, sickness, demons, and fear. See, you have the employed, the, the faith, uh, faith of action uh, and to, to receive that authority and join forces with him in the earth, in this earth, amen? So you are the one to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, praise God. Next, I got two more before I'm exiting. I'm almost done and I'm exiting it on out here. See, we have the authority to act as new creation. We have the act as new creations. Hebrews 2 verse 14, Hebrews 2 verse 14 says, for as much, as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. See, Jesus partake, partakes, amen, amen. Amen. Of the flesh. And for you to possibility of standing in the place of authority as the new creation of Jesus Christ. That. That you are okay. Okay. Can somebody jump in? All right. Oh, am I back? Whoo, yes. Okay. I, all right. I'm back. I see it on Facebook now. Okay. All right. So, where was I at? So, I was saying, okay. So you are born again, not a corrupted seed, but of, of incorruptible, uh, but by the word of God. First Peter, first 23, first Peter one, verse 23. So it was the word of the almighty God that was injected into your spirit, man, to bring about the new birth in your life. See, when the, the church was first uh, beginning in Acts 2, verse 24, Acts 12, describe it as the word of growing and multiplying see the word is in you but you are the one who must be willing to allow it to work for you ephesians 4 verse 21 through 24 ephesians 4 verse 21 through 24 says if so be that have heard me heard him i'm sorry and have been taught by him as the truth is in jesus and that ye put off Concerning the formal conversation of the old man, with a which is corrupted according according to the deceitful lust, and he renewed of the spirit of your mind, and ye and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created is righteous and true holiness. Amen. So you are the one in authority. It is your responsibility to put off the old man the 
unregenerated man that you were before you accepted Jesus. Come on, the, oh, the Holy Spirit does the exact actual work in you. So, but you must make the decision to allow him to do it. See, God has never focused or uh, forced, uh, I'm sorry, forced him, uh, his will on any person. And you got to put on that, you got to put off that old man. You, you use the word of God to renew your mind, praise God. And you put on the new man, which is a created in, in righteous and true holiness. Praise God. Know that guy. That's why we what, have to renew this mind on a daily basis. They have to, because just the world that we're living in is already jacked up and corrupted and already de a lot of deception as it is in the in the in the world. So we have to what renew our mind with the word of God. Amen. Last one. We can minister and walk from a point of authority. All right, we can minister and walk from a point of authority. So God's power is in his word. He is upholding all things by the word of his power. Hebrews 1 and 3, Hebrews 1 verse 3, Hebrews 1 and 3. You need to learn to minister and walk from a point of authority, ladies and gentlemen. His, uh, his earthly uh, ministry, Jesus said such things as <clears throat> be thy made whole. See, take up your bed and walk. <clears throat> then to the lame man, Peter said in Acts 3 and 6, Acts 3 and 6. <clears throat> it said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He too ministered and spoke from a point of authority. See, he came to the earth as a man for one reason, to recapture the authority that Satan has stolen through Adam's disobedience in the garden. See, it's, it's time for you as believers to begin to act that way. And you have the opportunity and inheritance. And in that, in that inheritance, you have been given all authority. Praise God. So the, the God of the universe lives inside of us. Amen. He lives and walk in you. Praise God. So become God inside minded and you will begin to walk in the point of authority. So keep right on. It said keep right on building yourself up in your inheritance amen and you can live in a world that is full of evil influences and satan wants to see it to see that you forget the reality of being born again see he wants you to see to it that you never realize the place of authority in christ jesus because if you do see the power that you walk in makes you absolutely dangerous to the enemy he has no defense against you when you walk in the power of God's word. <clears throat> Praise God. So when you see the word, you are in Christ Jesus, that you are in him, and then confess it with all of your heart, and then you will be strong, standing in a point of authority and operating in your inheritance in him. As you do this, the power of God will always be available to work on your behalf. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> well, that ends the lesson of tonight. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen, the authority is my portion. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to go ahead <clears throat> and um, any questions, I'm going to tell you guys, go ahead and put it in the chat and I will write them down and and uh, <clears throat> share afterwards. <coughs> yeah, small. I got a little book. All right, so, all right, so the authority of the believers uh, of the believers is the book that we're coming out tonight is by John. Mac Millen, Mac Millen, M A C M I L L A N. You guys can order this book, um, Thrifty Books. Remember, the book should be less than twenty dollars. Okay, so I'm just letting y'all know don't don't buy no book like this for eighty dollars. It's a little bitty book. No, it should be less than twenty. My books were five. This one was five, and the one I gave away was ten. <clears throat> Cause it's a bigger book, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and open up to.
for our first chapter, which we are going to read uh, chapter one and two, because we got time, the authority of the believers. And we're going to talk about uh, chapter two, the divine purpose of the ages. So chapter one, if you could go ahead and um, start with that, Alicia uh, Newby, if you if you if you in position, sweetie. Yes, ma'am. The authority of the believer. There are a few subjects relating to the Christian life concerning which there is so little exact knowledge as that of the believer of the authority of the believer. This is not because such authority is the property. Can you hear me, Apostle? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you, Alicia. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm just going to get some water. You sound good, okay. sweetie. Keep going. Right, thank you. This mm -hmm. is not because such authority is the property of only a few elect souls. On the contrary, it is the possession of every true child of God. It is one of the all things received in Christ. Its reception dates from the soul contact with Calvary probably because of the extreme importance of a correct understanding of its privileges and responsibilities and because of the power which they confer on a militant believer. The enemy has especially sought to hold back this knowledge from God's people. He has been successful through the employment of the blinding tactics which he has found effective in the case of the lost and of those who believe not. Second Corinthians four, three through four. For it is strangely true that although its principles are set forth, it is a definite way in the epistle to the Ephesians. There is very little grasp of them by the majority of even spiritual believers that there is such authority is recognized, but it is confounded with other aspects of the life of faith and thereby loses, loses its distinctive value and power. Every doctrine of scripture, while correlated closely with others of the same class, has features peculiar to itself. Only as these are clearly understood and held in their right relationship can there be the fullest benefit from their reception. The constitution and laws of the spiritual world are perfectly ordered and logical and must be adhered to and carefully obeyed if the desired and promised result is to be gained. In making this statement, it is not intended to suggest that a logical and intelligent mind can of itself grasp spiritual values or gain possession of spiritual blessings. Were that possible, the deepest phases of the Christian life would be the possession of the most intellectual. Whereas it is very definitely asserted by the spirit of God that in the apprehension of divine truth, the wisdom of the wise is destroyed and, under, and the understanding of the prudent brought to naught. Thank God there is an inner spiritual understanding conferred through the enlightenment of the same spirit, which enables the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. 1 Corinthians 1.27. This principle being established by God that no flesh should glory in his presence. 1 Corinthians 1 and 29. Wrong conceptions. 
the authority of the believer is by some confounded with the fullness of the spirit. It is taught that the coming of the gracious spirit of God into the soul in his divine fullness gives authority. But the believer's authority exists before he seeks or realizes in any special way the spirit's presence. It is certainly true that the fullness of the spirit empowers and enlightens the believer. By this alone, he is enabled to exercise authority. By the fullness is not, but the fullness is not the source of the authority, but something apart from it. Nor can authority be regarded as some special gift conferred, whereby the recipient is endued with power by virtue of which he performs mighty acts, such as the casting out of evil spirits, discernment of spirits and miraculous powers are mentioned among the charismata of the Holy Spirit but they differ from authority. By others, the authority of the believer is looked upon as nothing more than prevailing prayer. We have heard men on their knees when under a special urge, giving thanks to God for the gift of prayer conferred at the time. But later, there has been no result seen from the agony or enthusiasm of intercession through which they have passed. Personal blessing has resulted from the intense seeking of God's face, but a specific answer to their supplications has not been manifest. What is what authority is? Let us first of all define the difference between authority and power. In the New Testament, the translators have not been uniform in the rendering of many words. And those two words have suffered among others. One notable instance is in Luke 10, 19, where power, KJV, is twice used. Although there is a different Greek word in each instance, to have translated the first of these by the English word authority would have given a clear idea of the meaning of the passage. Perhaps our good old English tongue is at times to blame in not providing sufficient synonyms to meet the demands of the original. But a little more uniformity in rendering the same word from the original by the same English equivalent. A thing usually, though not always possible, would have given greater clearness of understanding, although in places it might not have been so euphonious. One stands at the crossing of two great thoroughfares. Crowds of people are surging by. Multitudes of high powered vehicles rush along. Suddenly, a man in uniform raises a hand. Instantly, the tide of traffic ceases. He beckons to the waiting host on the cross street and they flow across in an irresistible wave. What is the explanation? The traffic officer has very little power. His most strenuous efforts could not avail to hold back one 
of those swiftly passing cars. But he has something far better. He is invested with the authority of the corporation whose servant he is. The moving crowds recognize this authority and obey it. Authority then is delegated power. Its value depends upon the force behind the user. There is a story told of the right honorable W.E. Gladstone. When he served as prime minister of Great Britain, on one occasion, he brought in to Queen Victoria an important measure for her signature in order that it might become law. The queen objected to it and after some discussion refused to sign. The minister of the crown was unusually urgent. Your majesty, he said, respectfully but firmly, you must sign this bill. She turned on him haughtily. Sir, I am the Queen of England. Unmoved, the statement answered quietly, Your Majesty, I am the Pope of England. After a little thought, she accepted the situation and affixed her signature to the document. This story may be apocryphal, but it illustrates the question of authority. When two opposing powers are in conflict, the believer who is fully conscious of divine power behind him and of his own authority, thereby can face the enemy without fear or hesitation. Those who confront him bear the specific names of power and authority. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, Arcus, the first or preeminent ones, against powers, exousia, the authorities, Ephesians 6, 12. But behind the authority possessed by the believer, there is a power infinitely greater than that which backs his enemies <laughs> and which they are compelled to recognize. The source of authority. In the beginning of this article, we made the statement that the soul's authority dates from its contact with Calvary. Let us now point out the meaning and the depth of this truth. When the Lord Jesus, the captain, Orcagon, prince leader of our salvation, was raised from the dead, the act of resurrection was accomplished through the exceeding greatness of God's power, his power, God's power, dunamis, to us word who believe, according to the working energian of the strength, Kratos, of his might, Iskos, in this working, there was such a putting forth of the divine omnipotence that the Holy Spirit through the apostle requires four words of special significance to bring out the thought. We shall not enter into the expressive meaning and grouping of these words. Further than that to say that their combination signifies that behind the fact of one resurrection of the Lord Jesus, there lay the mightiest working recorded in the word of God. 
having been thus raised from among the dead, who, my God, Christ Jesus, who, was exalted by God to his own right hand, <laughs> who, in the heavenlies, who, thank you, Jesus, who, then was seen the reason of such mighty working. The resurrection had been opposed by the tremendous powers of the air. All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, aeon, age, but also in that which is to come. Ephesians 1.21, the evil forces of the age to come had been arrayed against the purpose of God. They had, however, been baffled <laughs> and overthrown. Ooh, thank you, Lord. And the risen Lord had been enthroned far above them. Ooh, my God ruling with the authority of the most high. <laughs> Paul says, because you about to run. You about to Thank run. You. I, I, get, I got to hold. I'm about to hold your mute on that one. Just hold your. Your mute. <laughs> Has any questions, underline, whatever you have. Uh, I know that's right. She was preaching. I know. Um make sure you write them in the comment or write them down and at the end we're going to be able to try to answer you guys questions i hate that i'm rushing through this but we got a, another hour before we end this book uh lisa if you can go ahead and start where she picked out the uh on page six at the bottom lisa lisa All right. Um, Fran. There go, Lisa. There go, Lisa. Okay. Fran. All right. Fran driving. That's fine. Go ahead, Lisa. What happened, Lisa? Go ahead. Is she reading? Yeah, I don't see the capture going. Lisa. Um, say can something. you hear me? Now I can. Yes, ma'am. Okay. In calling attention to the exceeding greatness of his God's power, we passed over without comment four words. These are to usward who believe. All the demonstration of the glory of God shown in the manifestation of his omnipotence pointed manward. The cross of Christ with what it revealed of obedience to God of atonement for sin, of crushing defeat of the foes of divine authority shows us a representative man overcoming for mankind and preparing through his own incumbency, a throne and a heavenly ministry for those who should overcome through him. Observe in this connection, the identification of Christ's people with himself. In this crisis of the resurrection, in the first verse of chapter two, the words read literally, and you being dead in trespasses and sins, it will be noticed that we have left out the verb, had he quickened, which appears in our Bibles. This verb is not in the original. The sentence is incomplete, being left unfinished says one expositor. In the rapidity of dictation, 
we do not accept this as the explanation of the omission. For we believe that the Holy Spirit so arranged the structure of the whole passage that the fact might be emphasized that Christ and his people were raised together. Where then do we find the verb that controls this passage? It will be seen in verses 19 and 20 of chapter one. According to that working of the strength of his might, when he raised him from the dead, then parentheses should be placed around the words in chapter one. And you, when ye were dead, the same verb which expresses the reviving of Christ expresses also the reviving of his people. That is to say, the very act of God, which raised the Lord from among the dead, raised also his body. Head and body are naturally raised together. Christ, the head, his, his body, the church, ecclesia, the assembly of believers in him. This is most, this is a most important statement and one of which the definite significance cannot be overestimated. The same thought in another form is developed by the apostle in Romans six, where the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus are shown to also include his people. The passage in Romans set forth the death to sin of the believer with the crucified Christ and the consequent annulling of the power of sin over him through the impartation of the life of the resurrected Christ. The believer is thus made a full partaker of Christ's righteousness. But Ephesians lifts the believer with the ascended Christ to the heavenlies where he is made a partaker of Christ's throne. In this enthronement, there is an anticipation of that future union in the government of the nations, which he shall share with his Lord, ruling them with a rod of iron and breaking them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Revelations 2, 26 and 27. Keep reading. Okay. The location of authority. That there may be no misunderstanding of the Holy Spirit's meaning in this presentation of the truth of the elevation of the Lord's people with their head. He gives it a second time in Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. They are made to sit with Christ in the heavenlies. Christ's seat is at the right hand of God. His people therefore occupy with him the same august position. This honor is not to a chosen few, but is the portion of all those who share the resurrection of the son of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, thank you. It is the birthright of every true believer, of every born again child of God. When the master foregathered with 11 on the Galilean mountain at some time during the 40 days of his manifestation after his passion, he said to them, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28, 18. His formal assumption of that authority took place when he sat down on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Hebrews 8, 1. The right hand of the throne of God is the center of power of the whole universe and the exercising of the power of the throne was committed unto the ascended Lord. He is still there in full possession of his rights, awaiting the father's time when his enemies shall be made the footstool of his feet. The elevation of his people with him to the heavenlies has no other meaning than that they are made 
shares potentially for the present of the authority which is his. They are made to sit with him. That is, they share his throne. To share a throne means without question to partake of the authority which it represents. Indeed, they have been thus elevated in the plan of God for this very purpose that they may even now exercise to the extent of their spiritual apprehension authority over the powers of the air and over the conditions which those powers have brought about on the earth and are still creating through their ceaseless manipulations of the minds and circumstances of mankind. The rebel holders of this authority. It is necessary to state here what is commonly understood by those who carefully study the word, that the kingdoms of this world are under the control and leadership of satanic principalities. The great head of these is in the Gospel of John, three times acknowledged as prince of this world by our Lord himself. He asserted claim to the serenity of the world kingdoms made in the presence of the Lord Jesus, Luke 4, 6, was not, de was not denied by Christ. Although a rebel against the Most High and now under judgment of dispossession, John 12, 31, he is still at large and as the masses of mankind are also rebels, he maintains over them in unquestioned because unsuspected rule, their eyes being blinded to his dominance. Second Corinthians 4, 4. The whole rebellious system is divided into heavenly and earthly sections. Isaiah 24, 21. These are the hosts of the high ones that are on high, the unseen powers of the air and the kings of the earth upon the earth, the rulers of mankind and their subjects. Both the prophet tells us will be judged in that day when the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Isaiah 26, 21. And with his hard and great and strong sword will punish Levithon, the swift serpent, the Antichrist, the Levithon, the crooked serpent, the false prophet, and he will slay the monster that is in the sea, the dragon. Isaiah 27, 1. Before these acts of judgment occur, the Lord's people will be caught up in the rapture. As Isaiah's eyes were that's holding to yes. the mystery of the church. That's Leviathan. That was Leviathan. Remember we talk about Leviathan, Leviathan okay. the king of pride. The king of pride. Yes, ma'am. You want me to keep reading? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, keep reading. Okay. As Isaiah's yeah. eyes were holding Please. to the mystery of the church, he does not mention it, but he does speak of the hiding of the Jewish remnant from the wrath of the dragon. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Isaiah 26, 20. The host of the high ones on high is carefully divided in our epistle. epistle. Ephesians 6, 12. There are first the principalities and powers. The first name are mighty princes whose principalities include large areas of the earth with authority over the nations included in them. 
the powers are difficult to distinguish from them. Although attempts have been made to state the difference, they are inferior in position, probably as ministers associated in government. Following come the world rulers of the darkness of this age. This name would suggest a ministry of deception, the keeping in darkness of the minds of men and especially of the leaders of thought. Finally, there are the hosts of wicked spirits in the heavenlies, an innumerable body of demons to whose close connection with mankind is due the grosser sins and deceptions, the stirring up of the animal passions, and the incitement of all manner of sensual and sensuous desires. These are the beings that are present in the spiritist seats, impersonating and deceiving people of strong intelligence, like the well-known leaders connected with the cult today. These beings are also at hand in religious gatherings and are a source of peculiar danger, especially when the emotions are deeply stirred. Many earnest souls who have been urged to entire surrender open their beings with the utmost abandon to whatever spiritual force approaches them, unaware of the peril of so doing. Such yielding often provides an opening for the entrance of demons who under some pretext gain control of the will. To dislodge them and to once more free the victim is usually a very difficult task. The kings of the earth upon the earth comprise human world rulers and their subjects, all unregenerated men. An earthly ruler individually may be a Christian, but he is, by virtue of his office, a member, a member of the great world system, which has not yet come under the dominion of the king of kings. All natural men are members by birth also of this system, and so must be delivered out of the power, excusia, authority of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians 1.13. The seats of authority of this rebellious spiritual rulers are also in the heavens. From there, they have dominated the human race since its fall. There, they will remain until the divine purpose of the ages is complete. My God. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Liz, if you can go ahead. Oh, no, let me go ahead and go with, oh, sorry. Hold up, Liz. Alicia, because I know Alicia's outside before you get dark, Alicia. Uh, Mabel. Go ahead if you can pick up. The divine, chapter two, the divine purpose of the ages. The God of the whole earth, who does, who, the God of the whole earth does not purpose to tolerate forever this rebellion against his righteousness. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and should not return that unto me every knee shall bow every tongue shall swear isaiah 45 and 23 ere this can be accomplished the instagners instigators of human rebellion must be cast down in this regard the divine method is clear the powers of the air are allowed to remain or are allowed to retain their seats only while their successors are being prepared god having redeemed a people and purified them has introduced them potentially into the heavenlies when they have approved themselves they will be actually ex, 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 taken 
the seats of the power of the air, therefore superseding those who have manifested their unfitness and unworthiness. This purpose, present and future, is very definitely stated in Ephesians chapter 3, 9, 11. There it is revealed as the divine will that now none the present time until the principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be made known through the church, the manifold wisdom of God. 3 and 10. The church is to be God's instrument in declaring to these rebellious and now a surging, absurd in powers, the divine purpose, and in administrating their principalities after they have been in unseated and cast down. This is further declared to be according to the eternal purpose of the ages, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is to say, God through all the past ages has made in view this wonderful plan of preparing in Christ Jesus a people chosen and called and faithful, whom he might place in these heavenly seats to rule through the ages yet to come. It is spoken of in the verses just preceding as the mystery, which for ages has been hid in God. One phase of this mystery being the wonderful veiling of the deity of the Son of God in our human nature, that we through him might be partakers of divine nature, 2 Peter 1 and 4. This alt, alt, this accusation of the saints and its option were revealed to Daniel in the first of his own great world visions. In verses 22 of chapter 7, after the coming of the ancient of days, judgment, judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdoms. A little later, 727, we read that the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. This meaning is clear. The saints of the Most High are the overcoming church raised to seat in the heavenlies. Below them, and as objects of their care, are the people of Israel, called here the people of the saints of the Most High. Israel will administer the heavenly kingdom and be head of the nations, but overall will rule the exalted church as the executive of God. The extent of this authority. We shall turn again to chapter one of Ephesians and consider in detail the power and things that have been made subject to our Lord in his exaltation to the Father's right hand. As we meditate on the completeness of his authority, let us remember that, that he is there as the representative of redeemed humanity, Hebrews 2, 5 through 9, and may the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Ephesians 1, 18, by the Holy Spirit so that we may believe without any doubt or shrinking that the wisdom will of the Father have made us sharers of this same authority and that he is virally intense and comprehensive and apprehension made to sit. We notice, first of all, that the risen Christ has been made to sit. The act of sitting indicates that for the time being, certain aspects of his work are being abenus 
later, the Lord will again raise up to the prey. But just now, with all authority delivered unto him, he is awaiting the Father's time and meantime exercising the powers placed in his hands for the working out of the redemption purpose from mankind on Calvary. Far above, his session is all principality and power and might and dominion. The great princes and authorities of whom we have previously spoken are subject to him. So are the lesser ones. He is far above all might. Dunamis, a word used, a word usually used in the New Testament of spiritual power. This refers to that working of satanic energy, which is becoming increasingly manifest, directed as it is against the bodies and minds of the children of God. The inroads that are being made into Christian communities are appealing, but few in the church are as yet awake to the fact that fresh powers from the unseen world are flooding in upon us, nor is the cause of this hard to trace. In parts of the heathen world, where the word of God energized by the spirit of God have penetrated, the powers of the air have fallen back. Demon possession ever retires before an aggressive uh, evangelism and its manifestation become less frequent. But in our so-called Christian lands, the authority of the word is now called in question by the great leaders of the church. And there are few theologian institutions where it is recognized as the very word of God. In like manner, the spirit of God is dishonored first by this very denial of the word which he has inspired and second by the disregard paid to his person and authority. Thus, there is a revision to heathen conditions spiritually and as the great agents for the overthrow of demonic powers, the word of God and the spirit of God are discredited. These powers are pressing in again upon our country and people. One single evidence of this fact is a tremendous advance of spiritualism and in, in making among all classes, while as another proof, the very doctrines of the church, the depleted of their vital spiritual forces as they are becoming or showing undoubted marks of those teaching of demons of which the great apostle bled his hearers Beware. Christ sits also far above all dominion. I know I pronounce that word. Kirotios, leadership. This term is closely aligned with the proceedings, such as principalities and power, or grouped together. The second term, in which case signifying similar action on a somewhat pop lower plane in Colossians 1 and 6, we find dominion connected with thrones, which throws light upon the relative term might. In the passage in Ephesians, and in that quoted from Colossians, both terms refer directly to spiritual powers, whereas in 2 Peter 2 and 10 and Jude 8, the only two other occasions of the use of the word in the New Testament, the primary reference, reference is to earthly uh, deities, dignities okay. Dignity. in this age. Amen. He says Amen. for above. Okay, sis. Sis, sis, sis. That's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, thank you. 
Liz, can you pick up where uh, Alicia is, is on page 17 in this age? Yes, I can, beautiful apostle. In this age. Thank you. you. In this age, he sits far above every name that is named, not only in this world. In age, 121. The great names of this age are below our Lord. The writer of Hebrews took pains to point out to Israel that even Moses was inferior to Messiah, Christ. As a servant is less than his master, but what an effort religious leaders are making today to show that Jesus was only a man, as such to be ranked with the best man. Over the door of the one of the great church buildings of New York appear figures of some world famous men such as Emerson, Einstein, Confucius, Buddha, etc. And with them, the figure of Christ as one among many. Not so speaks the spirit of truth. In his setting forth of the majesty of the divine son of God, there are none that can be compared. He is far above all. In this continued attempt to exalt humanity, there is to be recognized the working of him who deceived our first parents with the falsehood, ye shall be as God, age to come, but also in which was to come, 121. The coming of age also yields no name that ranks with our Lord. In that age, moreover, the now dominant spirit forces shall be bound. Their successors, the glorified church, shall recognize the preeminence of their exalted king. United with him as the head and the body, they will have become manifest in his fullness. He bides all in all, but he has chosen to do through his body. Thus, in the age to come, the members of Christ shall have an active ministry for God throughout the limitless extent of his universe. Under his feet, hath put all things under his feet, 122. The feet are members of the body. How wonderful to think that the least and the lowest members of the body of the Lord are those, those who are in a sense are the very souls of the feet, are far above the mighty forces that we have been considering. Yet so it is. We need for the church to awaken to the appreciation of her mighty place of privilege, exalted to rule over spiritual powers of the air. How often she fails in her ministry of authority or grovels before them in fear. Head over all. Head over all things in the church. 122. We have grasped, little grasped the force of this marvelous truth. We think of it as an indicator that Christ was simply in all things and circumstances and places the church's head. Let us reverse the words to bring out more clearly their deep significance. Head to the church over all things. He being head over all things is for the church's sake, that the church, his body, may be head over all things through him. We need to sit reverently and long before these mighty truths, that the tremendous meeting may grasp our heart. In this attitude, the spirit of truth can lift us into their comp comprehension, with the human mind alone will always fail the comfort. The operation of God. The argument which have been following has th been thus far centered in the epistle to the Ephesians. We pass for a few minutes to the epistle of the Colossians that we may view from a different standpoint how completely this whole matter of authority of the believer is based on the working of the Father and how efficacy of the working depends on the correlated truth of, subject of the subjugation of the Christ to himself, him. Through co-equal with the Father, the Eternal Son accepted a subordinate place and undertook the task of reconciling through the blood of his cross and all things unto God. 120. Having for this purpose yielded himself under the power of death, he was quickened by the operation of God the Father. 2 and 12. Let us read carefully 2, 12 through 15, noticing that the working here indicated is all the part of God the Father. It is he who... 2.13, quicken the saints together with the Christ and forgave the trespasses. It is he who, 2.14, blotted out the adverse decrees of the law, which stood, out, stood in the way of his people and nailed it, canceled it, handwriting to the cross of his son. It is he who, 2.15, boiled, apenchemist, completely stripped the mighty principalities and power that have opposed the resurrection of the Lord and led them captive in the triumphal procession of Christ, in Christ. The frequent misunderstanding of the passage is the Lord Jesus stripped off from himself the clustering powers of darkness and overthrowing and putting them on to an open shame. 
but correct rendering shows clearly that the agent is God the Father. Of what does he strip the powers of the air, of the authority that has been theirs? Death is the penalty of sin, and when Christ, bearing the burden of the world's guilt, went down to death, they sought to exercise their ancient prerogative and hold him under its power. But in the wisdom of the Father, the yielding of righteous one to death discharged the long-established bond of the law. Exultantly, the Father nailed the canceled bond to the cross of his Son, then stripping of their authority and discomforting principalities and power. He handed his authority to his son to show triumphal possession, which is the apostle figuratively uses corresponds to the elevation of, of the son above his enemies mentioned in Ephesians. Thus, in Colossians, there is stress to the stress the father's working and active thwarting and overthrowing of the hostile powers and the subjugation to his son while in Ephesians, the son is seated above an all authority of the father's throne. The authority of the believer is not taught so fully in Colossians. Although the statement is made that in him, his people are complete, literally made full. That is to say, through union with him, they partake of the fullness of Godhead, which is practically another form of being blessed with all spiritual blessings. The failure of the church. We saw in the previous section, the Lord is head over all. His position and power are supreme. Why then? Is there not more manifest progress? Because a head is wholly dependent upon its body for the car carrying out of its plan. All members of its body must be subservient, and there through the coordinated ministry may, ministry may be accompanied to what is proposed. The Lord Jesus, head over all things to the church, which is his body, Ephesians 1, to 23, is hindered in his mighty plans and working. Because his body has failed to appreciate the deep meaning of his exaltation and respond to the gracious impulses which he constantly spent sending for his quickening. The word of God. It is vital truth that divine working that the word of God is the pattern by which the ministry of the church is framed. The glory of the body of Christ is the fact that its members are living members, each with a personal will. The Holy Spirit comes to these individual members in order to bring them into unity with the will and the purposes of the head. But this is not done through inward impulse alone. Inward impulse inaugurates obedience toward the head, but the renewed mind cannot be fully instructed to save the word. Consequently, it is only as the word is carefully meditated upon, understood, and obeyed that the head has freedom of action through its members. How little is the average member feeds with careful mastication upon the word, most of us know from our own experience. The Spirit of God. The importance of this can be seen by comparing Ephesians 5.18 FF with Colossians 3.16 FF in the first passage, the stirring of inward emotions of the heart with a consequent subjugation of the believers one to another in their various relations is indicated as the working of the Spirit of God in his fullness. But in the second passage, exactly the same results are pointed out to be the result of the rich indwelling of the word of Christ. The word of Christ is setting forth in his will from the that is understandable by the renewed mind. But the renewed mind, while understanding the word, lacks power to perform it. The fullness of the Spirit is incoming in the Spirit of God to empower the human spirit for the carrying into effect of the accepted will of the head. Thus, unless the word richly indwells for instruction of the mind, the spirit of God, although present in his fullness, has nothing to work upon. The impulses of the head cannot be translated by him into appropriate action through the body, but are often likely the immature emotions of a child. The head is thereby hindered because the body has not grown up in the stature of perfect man. The divine patience of the head waits. Brethren, we are to blame greatly, not for our own weakness, but our own for the heads that hang down in Paul's knees. God help us to realize this and to fulfill our ministry through the word, both to others and to the Lord. Amen. Wow, that was pretty good. I tell you, that was that was real good. Um, questions, if you guys. I only had one thing to say, Apostle. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> this book started out with- Yeah, it's got a question in Zoom. Or just unmute. 
and uh, I'll go ahead and we'll wrap it up. Ian. What, Pooh? Wait, I got you. Unmute again, sweetie. Apostle. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Now, start over so I didn't miss nothing. I didn't have a question at the time. I was just saying, my God, this book just started out with explosion. Bang, 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 bang. That's all I had to say. I'm over here like, wow. And all I hear is bang, 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 bang. <laughs> oh, God, wow. it's so amazing. This is such a wonderful book. I'm so, so excited and so glad to be here. God bless you all. God bless you, Apostle. I'm telling Amen. you, I'm going to yield my mic because, woo, I'm telling you, God is worthy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. That he is worthy. Wow. I tell you, a knowledge is 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 good, good food. Knowledge is powerful. Uh, we already know if our people doesn't get enough of the knowledge, then they will uh, lack in areas as well as perish. So um, I thank God that you know each uh, quarter that we the books that we we uh, read is all God chosen them uh, because I I'm clueless I ain't never read this book a day in my life amen so um anybody else go ahead and unmute if you would if you have any questions pertaining to the topic amen Come on, let's talk. Talk to me about the authorities of the believers and the divine uh, uh, of the uh, purpose of the ages. Anybody? I, well, why you? Oh, go ahead, Alicia. I just want to point out something that we've been hearing repetitively um, through the book and the teaching, and even with you um, giving us notes for tonight that it talks about in the book what you, well, you were talking about and explaining um, that the authority comes through obedience to the word of God and then the book mentioned along with that our spiritual apprehension um, and you also mentioned that a lamb is um, kind of like an immature sheep but as we grow up and become mature we become sheep to be led. And so it's just amazing to see how it breaks down our authority and how our authority increases by our obedience and our spiritual apprehension. So we go from immature saints who have the authority, but we don't know how to use it when we receive the spirit of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But like you said, through the teaching, through the training, as we grow and mature in our obedience and our spiritual apprehension and our spiritual understanding of who God is, understanding not only who we belong to, but who we are in God and that we sit with him in heavenly places. And because we sit with him in heavenly places, because we have his spirit, because we walk in obedience, we have full access to everything that he has access to. And we have authority over the enemy. We can walk on snakes and scorpions it over, it said, all the authority of the enemy and nothing, and I'm going to say that again, and nothing, and I'm going to say that one more time, and nothing shall so ever harm us. We have nothing to fear but God. According to his word, it says, the beginning of God, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And it's just so powerful, this teaching and this class, the instruction we're getting, because like uh, somebody was saying earlier, and you even uh, spoke about it, Apostle, even in a book, it says it, 
we're not walking in the body as we should be aligned with the head because we are uh, having fear. We're letting the enemy bombard our thoughts with doubt and negativity. When we understand who we are and whose we are and what we carry and as intercessors, humble ourselves and seek the Lord, then we will see the things of this world begin to change around. Sometimes as Christians, we believe, well, this is supposed to happen. And there are some things that are supposed to happen, but there are some things that wouldn't be happening if we would yield ourselves, pray to God and begin to take our authority and dominion in the earth as God has given us. We're a lot of times living beneath our what should be our standards living beneath the power they using it effectively yeah we use it but we're not using it always effectively and it's just amazing it's powerful it's such a blessing oh my god to understand what god is saying to us and understanding what we have operating in us and absolutely walking and using it effectively for the kingdom of God. Because as you stated, Apostle, earlier, even heaven backs us up what we say. So we have to be careful what we say. We can speak to a thing. We can establish a thing. We can bind a thing. We can cast it down. And we can call on the name of the Most High, the name of Jesus. We can plead his blood. The blood still works. And I'm just thankful and I'm grateful. And I just give God all the glory and the praise. Ooh, ooh -wee. Come on, bring the fire, bring the fire, bring the fire. <laughs> ooh, I love it, I love it. All right, Lisa, I seen you, baby girl. Come on, Lisa. I'm mute. That was awesome question, Lisa. Lisa, Lisa, come on, sis. Talk to me. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Nick, sis. Try again. Talk. Okay. Um, give her a minute. I don't know. If it's on my part or was it her part? Uh, why she um, trying to find out? You know what I um, you already know that I've been the last couple of months been talking and teaching um, about, and it, it even stated in on page eleven, and, and it talked about uh, like the well known leaders connected with the coat today so if i ask the question what is coat what is c-u-l-t in your eyesight what do you consider a coat would that be christian sorority and fraternities would that be freemason and eastern stars what 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 what, what you know what would you think it may be as a believer so i mean it's stacy right here that that known leaders. So that's what happens. Known leaders. After a while, when they first come out into ministry, they teaching the word of God, preaching the word of God, the whole night. And then all of a sudden, a little crack, a little opening, the enemy slitters his head in with the spirit of error, a spirit of deception. So now we are waving in the documents that we, the, the original biblical foundation, which we are supposed to be building over, building on top of, building on. But instead, a man-made thinking change. You hear I said man-made thinking may change? Yeah. So um, it's so important that, you know, you understand what is an occult An occult, what it does, people be in it so heavy that it's like, uh, it's, it's like you ever known, <laughs> you already know, 
uh, being on drugs and then being addicted to that drug. It could be calling you in the middle of the night or even getting into any type of uh, addicted, uh, any type of addiction. It has such a strong hold on you that it all was like brainwashed you. To where you you can't even see about so it's the same thing when it talks about this coat being connected uh, into uh into an uh, i said a coat or he, he either or a coat but same thing so i just know that you know we got to be very very careful you know because i hear people you know you know a lot of our black leaders especially I, i'm hearing this thing with christians or Authorities and fraternity is okay. It's networking is innocent. It's it's a Christ. Come on, the history, the person, the founders. Come on, let's let's go. let's do our homework. Amen. I was trying to give you at least a little time to to jump in. What was your what was your question? Friend, I see you, but my thing is freezing. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Alicia said basically all that I wanted to hit. I'm good. Amen. Amen. I like when Alicia uh Ian did say. Uh, when we talked about, when I was talking about the a coat or the uh, coat, it's witchcraft all day long. It really is. It really is witchcraft. And we quit witchcraft. We already know is the same as rebellion. Where is that? First Samuel. What I always talk about. First Samuel fifteen twenty three. I think it is. Yeah, it's rebellion is the same as witchcraft. And stubbornness is, uh, we already know, is stubbornness is pride. Anybody else have anything? I'm going to find that. Samuel. I think it is 1523. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Anybody else? I'm waiting for you guys to. What is my thing? How can I internet ain't? Amen. Amen. Uh, anybody else? Come on, y'all. We ain't gonna be long. I promise you. We almost about to get out of here. First Samuel. What I said. First Samuel. Fifteen. Twenty-three. Did I say? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. Amen. So yeah, that's right. First fifth, first Samuel 15 and 23. It said for what rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So anytime you rebel against the original plan, the original thing, uh, biblical principle of what God has called us to do and told us specifically is in the word of God. And then we kind of um, kind of steer away from that and we do what we want to do. Uh, so we know rebellion is disobedience. So that's why a lot of people not walking in the power and authority because of what? Disobedience. So why are you not seeing signs and wonders and miracles taking place in the church? Come on, think about that. Why are you not seeing folks get healed for, and, and walking out of uh, walking in a wheelchair and leave out? I mean, roll in in a wheelchair and walk out. Come on. So got to and, and let me say this too: got to be careful, too, because the enemy always try to mock or mimic what God does. He you know, he he always counterfeit himself like an, uh, a masquerade, like an angel of light. So he does signs, wonders and miracles, too. But so that's why we have to know that we know by our discernment has to be turned up 1,000 times in these times in testing the spirit by the spirit and know the fruits of what they're bearing as well. Okay, it's so important because remember I told you, you could be sitting next in the seat to, I, I don't want to say it, 
somebody that's anti Christ, somebody that's rebellion. Yeah. Uh -huh. But so it said, what now, Lisa? You said, what says? Wait a minute, because you know I can't say it because I, I can't see. My thing is freezing. You in the chat. Oh, the 79 were sheep. And then, and because of their assignment, authority was present. Okay. Okay. 79 was lambs. Okay. So, what, what, Lisa, talk to me. You, you chat, I mean, you put it in the, in the, in the chat, but I can't, you know, my thing is freezing. I can't see everything. All right. All right. So let me go back. Oh, go ahead. There she is. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. No, I was referring to the video. The um, I can't pronounce his name, but he talked about the, the seventy. Mm. He talked about the seventy that they were. Uh, oh, you talking about the, the? I'm talking about the video that was sent out. Yeah. The seventy. The seventy. Yeah, the 70 that went out. Yeah, the 70 that went out. And okay. because of their assignment, they they had the authority. He differentiated between the when Jesus sent the 12 and Jesus that uh, said he was um, giving them authority and power to cast mm -hmm. out demons. But when the 70 went out, mm -hmm. they were just going uh, beforehand, that assignment was not, um, uh, it didn't have uh, to cast out demons, but because of their assignment, they had that authority. Mm -hmm. That's what he mm -hmm. stated in the video, because of your assignment, um, uh, you walk in that authority, even though it was not given. Mm -hmm. And that these were lambs, they were not sheep. So these were beginners. Somebody who just yes, got saved. But 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 they they had a heart of obedience. So anyway, that that was something I want to go back and look at because I never I, I never saw that or heard that uh uh preached as far as the 70 going out and that um these were lambs, like novice, like beginners. But because of mm -hmm. their assignment mm -hmm. and because Babe. of their yes, obedience, um, they were able. Um, uh, um, uh, they were able to see results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. So it is. So yeah, it's definitely uh, Luke ten one through twenty four is what she's talking about. Luke ten verse one through twenty four. So you guys can kind of read that, and maybe next week we can kind of elaborate on it as well. Uh, most definitely, it says a short. It's a short time after it was actually a short time after Jesus has transfiguration, and he appointed uh, seventy two people to go out two by two to what to preach the good news to each town before he visited. And he said to the, the large group, Jesus, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And uh, yeah, so yeah, that, that, that's it. Um, that's good, Lisa, that's good. Somebody just, a, a apostle said something on Facebook. I was trying to read it. Oh, okay, all right, go ahead. Any other questions? Oh, and I and also I wanted to say, oh God, what's that? Just to go into that uh, first Samuel, I will be studying that as well. Amen. Um, going back to first Samuel 15 and 23. Again, we got we already know that that stubbornness, that stubbornness is the what we talked about it. Lisa read it. We were talking about Leviathan, it's the king of pride. That stubbornness is the king of pride. Remember that stubbornness is as the iniquity and the idolatry, uh, because that because they had rejected the word of the Lord. All right. And he did is also rejected thee from being king. Okay. 
All right. Um, any questions? Any questions? Amen. So, yeah, for homework, too, remember that uh, scripture that I just gave you. I want We're going to try to elaborate on that a little bit, too. What did I say? Luke 10, sis. One through, was it 17? Right. Did you write it down? Liz, you didn't write it down. Luke 10, 1 through 24, Apostle. Luke 10. Okay. Through 24. Thank you, baby. 1 through 24. Appreciate it. 1 through 17. Oh, I said 1 through 17. Uh oh. Okay. 1 through 17. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one through seventeen. Okay, yeah, one through seventeen, because twenty it starts at twenty three. Amen. Okay, all right. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? What else I seen that I underlined that I really like? And we already know that uh, whole rebellion systems are divided into the heavenly and the earthy sections. Yeah, we see that today. Any, any other questions, guys? Come on, y'all. We've got four more minutes before we shut it down, shut it down. So if I ask the question, guys, why are we not seeing... Um, um for instance why we're not seeing uh, from the head of working uh operating in uh the authority god has already placed in us why why do you think what's your spill on that you know a person can go up to the to the altar every week get prayed for get prayed for go back leave with the same demons come on uh i already I always say i have a i have a i have a problem with that you know is the person willing to let go of the uh spirit that has been in them or depression or fear or whatever that's a question that we you know we sit and ask that you know or do they recognize that they are being influenced or harassed or enticed or whatever they oppress with uh, spirits? Come on, friend, talk to me. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, I am finally safe. So, Lisa, you always bring the conversation to the table. I love it. So good. Um, you know. The, the story of when the 70s were sent out. Um, uh, that's, I remember, and if I could share quickly, um, I remember sharing this one time on the, um, on the prayer line when, um, you know, Apostle was training us in deliverance and how to do corporate deliverate, deliverance and, um, you know, to lay hands, on your children, on your husband, you know, on, um, because we have authority. And I remember sharing my first experience and, um, there were like war stories. I mean, you could just, you could just hear the apostles talking about it, you know, like, like this is, you know, um, I encountered the, the spirit of fear and the spirit of rejection and I laid my hands and it came out screaming or it manifested because that's how my conversation was when I was talking to Apostle because um, I've never seen it face to face. I've never seen the manifestation face to face. So when, when we were taught um, in deliverance with our Apostle, and, you know, she gave us the equipment and the training to cast that we will be given authority to cast out unclean spirits in the name of Jesus. Um, 
yeah, I can only imagine the stories that the, the, the disciples were telling one another, because when you go through it, when you take people through deliverance, when you see the manifestation and, and you see the victory of, of Christ, and when you say the name of Jesus and the, and the demons tremble, and you see it for yourself, and people say, oh my goodness, it's real. I saw their eyes change. I see their hands change. I, I, I see the, I heard the screams and it just wasn't natural. It was, um, it was different when they see it for themselves. I can only imagine how doubting Thomas felt and said, Father, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. I'm sorry when I said, I repent and I said, um, I don't believe it until I stick my fingers through the palm of his hands. And, and my whole family was saved because of the deliverance that had gone forth right before their very eyes. And the, and the, and the name of Jesus and the power of the blood of Jesus and the authority that Jesus was trying to tell the disciples I can only imagine the war stories that those disciples were talking about. And I, I love that story. I always think of that. Of, and I could just hear the disciples, you know, talking among themselves. And it, and it sounds like war stories when you, when you hear veterans, you know, talking about when they were in battle or Vietnam. Or I, I have um, a lot of friends and family that, that, that went to war so that's what it sound like war stories so it's so it's so amazing I mean deliverance is truly the children's bread thank you Holy Spirit but deliverance is for his children it's for the believer because it's the children's bread and and um I remember you know learning about um, deliverance and the authority that we that we should be walking in um, when we when we come to Christ and and the power of the cross and the blood of Jesus. So I'm looking forward to that conversation next week about you know the 70 and what it must have sound like and what it must have looked like because you know it, it, among believers just to lift up the name of Jesus and to and to hold that banner of Jehovah Nisi and say victory is ours we fight from a place of victory that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus so 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 amazing in Jesus name amen 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 and also I also, I will send that information to if I can get a short video on that. I, I think it's a teaching on it as well. Um, I'll see if I got it in my playlist. Okay. Well, guys, uh, oh man, amen. That was good. I mean, that was truly good. I can't wait for next week. I think next week we're going to talk about, uh, we, you know, three and four. We combine the chapters to make it, you know, this uh into what eight weeks or nine weeks i can't think is it nine or eight weeks nine weeks uh so we're going to talk about the qualification for authority and then we're going to talk also about the particular uh exercise of authority amen oh guys i love it i love it i love it you guys gonna be equipped come next weekend because you know next weekend is the a night of miracles right that's right so y'all gotta be ready y'all gotta be ready for that as well um so I'm, I'm saying this to you all just tell everybody you can listen it's a free event it's open to the public all is welcome and I, I heard somebody say who so who's the uh guest speaker uh, did you ever heard of Apostle Francella McCoy with Healing and Many Ministry? She's gonna be, she's gonna be teaching. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna probably be teaching on what is deliverance or, or come on, I, I don't know. I, I actually God has got me a, a deliverance manual that I had already written when I was on a sabbatical. So that manual was actually was, uh, 
really, really uh, written for to take in to help train leaders and well as their minister uh, team, as well to getting them ready for doing deliverance in their church. Amen. Amen. Like I said, there shouldn't be no way that somebody comes in every week up to the altar every week and uh, leave with the same demons. Uh, again, like I said, it, my heart cries out. My heart, you know, is really, really gets touched by that when I see uh, um, there's no... The, There's no you know power. Yeah, no power for and accepting the great commission. Well God is told that we all should be doing as believers, laying hands on on the sick, casting out demons, making disciples. Come on. It was our it was that was already the instructions. It was already the uh, the, the the foundation was already laid before us. All we had to do was just walk in it and be obedient and walk in it. So, uh, amen. So, yeah, you guys. Oh, we also looking for venues, too. So if you know any vendors that's selling products, uh, make sure it's a... Uh, as Lisa always said, I don't, I, I'm not any type of vendor. I'm very particular because you bring it in them idols and you bring it in sage and crystals. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a might as well let you know. Mm, no, I'll be like Jesus. I'll be ready to, no, I'm just kidding. Be ready to turn, turn the tables up over because we, we, we didn't turn the house into a thief, a dens of thieves. So, um, so, uh, amen. Y'all pray for me. So <laughs> let's go ahead and end on that note. Uh, amen. Um, any other questions? I have this, but let me go ahead. I have a particular prayer, uh, pertaining to the lesson. Uh, let me go ahead. Father, we just thank you right now. Father, we just Thank you on tonight, oh God, and just giving us more of your knowledge when it comes to the word of, of walking in your total authority, oh God. I just thank you right now that you have given us uh, the victory over the enemy in every area of our life through the authority to give to us through the blood of Jesus. I, I thank you that your most holy word of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, and the faith and, and the blessing that we bless the name of Jesus Christ, I will always prevail over the enemy. Hallelujah. And I, I'm, we're more than a conqueror than G, in Christ Jesus who loves us, oh God. I thank you with your uh, continual help, Lord. I ask that we begin to continue to be sober-minded and virtue and vig invigorated because I realize that Satan has, is, is a roaring lion and he is walking about seeking whom he may divide and I resist him and we steadfast and we stay steadfast in, in, in the faith and I thank you God that we can submit ourselves to you Father and, and resist the devil and therefore we know that he had to flee from us in the mighty name of Jesus and above all that we take that shield of faith and your mighty word and use it to quench all the fire darts that that the enemy uh, hurls in our directions and I, that we will be able to overcome him at all times through the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and, I, and that we will refuse to believe every spirit and we will try the spirit to see whether they are from you, Father. I would, Lord, I thank you that we praise you, Father, for the reali uh, realization that the, that the weapons that you have given to us for the spiritual warfare are not carnal, but instead that they are mighty through uh, through you to the tearing down of every stronghold and that we will use the weapons that you have given us to cast down the imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself uh, against knowing you and I that we began to bring into captivity of every thought through the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you so much for your peace, oh God. I thank you that even now that we are able to, that you have bruised uh, Satan under, bruised him, and you have put Satan under our feet, oh God, for the for the giving of the grace, uh, the giving us that grace, oh God, that we need, oh God, in Christ Jesus in all areas of our lives. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, guys, God bless you. Love you. 
Love nine minutes over. You guys, I thank you for for your patience as well. Y'all have a blessed as we come to class. Love you. Good night, all. Oh, there we go. Stop. Stop.